Hello and welcome to another video. I'm at Rome Fiumicino Airport having just landed here courtesy of Alitalia from London Heathrow. Today I'm going to be flying to Delhi in India and I'm really excited for two reasons. Firstly, I'm going to be flying Alitalia's long haul business class on the A330, something which people tell me is a great experience, especially with the food on board. Secondly, it's also my first time ever in India and I'm really looking forward to it. Come and join me on this trip and enjoy the video. Transferring at Rome Fiumicino Airport is very easy. For me, there was no additional security check or passport check to endure. Alitalia's flagship lounge, Casa Alitalia, is located at the end of one of the international concourses. Be warned, it was extremely busy for the duration of the time I was in the lounge. This lounge has two big positives as far as I can see. I really like the understated interior design and the general ambience of the lounge is really pleasant. Secondly, the food offerings in this lounge are excellent. There's a live cooking station offering pizza and pasta, and all of the food and drink on the buffet station in the center of the lounge looked absolutely delicious. Everything looked appetizing and fresh, a far cry from the somewhat sad offerings that you'll get on some of their competition. Unfortunately, the lounge emphasizes these elements a little too much. I had to get some work done. The lounge was so busy and so noisy and there is no dedicated business center. So I headed over to the E-Gates, where my flight would be departing from, to check out the second of Alitalia's lounges here in Rome. As it turned out, there's no business center in the satellite lounge either, but no matter because it was a little bit quieter and I managed to get some work done in the end. Otherwise, the lounge is pretty much identical to the one I just showed you in the main terminal. So just managed to get myself a little snack and finally complete some work uh, in the Piazza del Popolo lounge, which is in the E-Gate satellites, which is where I am now. There seems to be quite a lot of uh, construction going on. Not sure if you can uh, see behind me but um, at least it's a lot more chilled out and civilized here. There's not too many people about, and that's because they only announced the gates about an hour and a half before the plane is due to leave. Um, so I think everyone is kind of on their way over here now to gate E37. I've been here for about an hour. Our aircraft today is an Airbus A330-200. This is in Alitalia's new livery. I think most of the passengers were still on their way to the satellite terminal when they started calling priority boarding, which is for business class passengers and top tier Alitalia and Skyteam frequent flyers. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Alitalia's leather upholstered business class seats are a little unusual in that the two colours that they have on them don't feature anywhere else in the airline's colour scheme. The business class cabin is fairly small and intimate and the seats are laid out in a one-to-one -one configuration. The arrangement is staggered so half of the seats, like this one in front, actually have a table in between them and the window. These seats are much less private. By the way, the curtains that you can see across these business class seats are actually for crew rest purposes. You can't normally select these online because they're used by off-duty crew getting some rest to make sure that they're okay to operate the flight safely. My seat is 4A and is a true window seat. As is customary in long haul business class, there's a pre-departure drink service. Champagne, water or orange juice were offered. I tend not to drink too much on long flights, so it was just orange juice for me to start off today. Rome to Delhi normally takes 7 hours and 35 minutes. It's 3,691 miles. Here is what a typical route over to Delhi would look like. However, we took an extra hour because Pakistani airspace was closed. 
Let's take a look at these slightly dated business class seats here on Alitalia. There's a very generous ottoman and there's some good storage underneath as well. There are also a couple of charge points located at the bottom of the seat and there's a handy table which folds out from the partition here. I really like this tray table layout for the main reason is that you can actually push the table away so that you can leave the seat without having to take everything off the table and store it elsewhere. The remote control controls the in-flight entertainment screen and the seat controls as you can see here are fairly intuitive. There's also an option to actually move the seat forward. This is because the tray table itself doesn't come closer to you, you have to go to it. There's also a very annoying flexible reading lamp which never ever seems to stay in the right place. If reading is not your thing then perhaps the in-flight connectivity interests you. Business class passengers get a measly free 50 megabytes of Wi-Fi. Something I noticed which I think you really should be aware of if you fly Alitalia, there's a roaming network on board. The price for data is not shown in this text message but you can bet yourself it's going to be really expensive. Turn your roaming off. Just as the main highlight of the lounge was food, here in the skies, Alitalia serve up an enormous array of dishes. I've never seen a menu quite as extensive as this in international business class before. It's definitely true what people say about Alitalia. The food really is excellent on board. This rose of duck breast marinated in orange was absolutely delicious. It was so flavorful and a really interesting starter. The presentation of the raviolini second course was a little disappointing, but it was still delicious nonetheless. One thing which is really worth saying about the crew is that they were old fashioned, and I mean that in a really good way. The service on board was memorably polished and professional. I think we have a perception of Italian cuisine in the UK as being just about pizza and pasta, but the service on board really made me reconsider my preconceptions. There were so many Italian choices on the menu that I felt guilty for not trying them all. I've had the benefit of flying some amazing business class products recently and the Alitalia food is right up there with some of the best that you've seen on this channel in the last few months. The service concluded with a hot towel and it was off to the bathroom where I would prepare for a short nap. This flight arrives in Delhi at just about half past one in the morning. The bathroom being clean and otherwise unremarkable, it was time to convert my seat into the fully flat bed that it becomes. Sorry for the really dark pictures, but the cabin actually gets impressively dark at night, facilitating sleep on these awkward flights. I found the bed a little narrow and restrictive, but it was absolutely fine for a short two hour nap. As night fell and the cabin darkened, we passed over Iran. This is a mystical and wonderful place. I hope to visit one day when the political climate is a little different. The in-flight entertainment options on Alitalia are relatively limited. There wasn't a huge amount that I wanted to watch, so I just stuck with having a look at us flying around Pakistan. Noise cancelling headphones are provided, but you'll probably only want to use these if you forgot your own. There's also an amenity kit provided by Salvatore Ferragamo. This is one of the more attractive bags that I've seen and I've kept it to store my own toiletries on future trips. Inside there's pretty much everything that you would expect from an amenity kit on a 7-8 to eight hour flight. As we pass midnight local time, for some reason Alitalia served breakfast as the second meal. Now I don't actually remember eating this and I don't have any notes to tell me exactly what this was, so if you can help out let me know in the comments below. Personally I'd have preferred a second light meal as opposed to breakfast. I think most people who take this flight leave it at half past one in the morning to go to a hotel or perhaps home. So to sum up, I paid £808 for a one-way ticket from London to Delhi via Rome. Not only is it a reasonable fare, it's also the cheapest that any airline was willing to offer for a one-way ticket to Delhi. Overall, I found most aspects of Alitalia's product to be fine. The seats are a little old, but reliable and convert into a flat bed. The main highlights for me are the excellent food and beverage service, both on the ground and in the air, and of course the polished and professional service given by the crew. A couple of things Alitalia could really think of improving upon. Firstly, put a business center in to your business class lounges. Not everyone is there just to eat and while away the time. Secondly, I think they can improve their in-flight entertainment selection. This was a flight to India, but North America is a big market for Alitalia, and to capture Western tourists, they're really gonna want to up their game when it comes to the offerings on the in-flight entertainment screens.
That's all for this video. I hope you'll subscribe and I hope you've enjoyed coming with me to Delhi. Until next time, see you around.